Hey guys, this is Matt with Storm and Rail Fan 96, and I am very happy to show you System Test 8. Now, before we continue on with this test, I just want to say that I've made significant improvements to my system, and I am very happy with my system. And for the first time ever, my system is working 100% with some bonus stuff added onto it. And for this video, I'm doing this a little differently. I'm going to be using the tripod to explain some of this stuff, just so it's not as uh, messy of a video. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. So this right now is just my remote strobe uh, Spectralert Classic. Uh, this is not part of the system. I just thought I would start the video off with that. So I'm going to show you what I've done so far. First off, we're going to begin with this. Every single alarm that I have now except for the Wheelock AS is now properly mounted. I mean every single alarm. Before the alarms used to kind of just hang on a nail and not be mounted correctly. Now I did some research and <laughs> actually did the correct way of mounting it. So now every single alarm other than the AS is working or is mounted correctly. Alright guys, let's start over here. First off as usual, we have my System Sensor Spectra Alert Classic. It is on Code 3 Horn and is 75 Candela. And we're going to run down the wall here. We still have the on off switch. And we also have my Simplex T bar. Uh, again, I am not sure of the model number. I know I've got some comments on my other videos on what it might be. So my guess is, from the comments, it's uh, 2099. So we'll just say that for now. But there's a change to this pull station that I've made. Okay, now originally, this pull station used to just dangle on a hook. It wasn't stable, as you had seen in some of the videos. Now... It is properly mounted. We got the four screws right there, 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 and there. I'm using all my force to wiggle on it and it is not moving. So that's a very nice improvement with that pole station. Alright, let's go ahead and close this. Put that back. Alright, now let's go on to the best uh, new add-ons with my system. I don't know if you could see that or not, but those are the two 6 volt batteries that were previously used, but there are no wires coming out of them. Well, that's correct, guys. We are not using battery power anymore for the system, or 12 volts as that. Uh, so now we are using an AC adapter. That's the connection point right there. So, AC adapter plugs into the wall. This AC adapter produces 24 volts DC. And this is a add-on that you can get from Amazon. You could get this deal very, very nicely on Amazon. So it didn't cost me a lot of money. I forget how much. But uh, currently, you just plug it in and you got power. The only issue we have right now is this. The power supply, and we're going to fix this obviously, but this is just temporary. The power supply is alligator clipped together. Obviously not the best setup, but uh, when we get a chance, we're going to solder the connections in place just so there's no alligator clips that are necessary for this anymore. So that's the only issue with this, but other than that, it is working wonderful. Over here on the opposite side of the basement, we still have my System Sensor Spectra Alert Advanced P2W and now it is properly mounted we found the mounting plate and mounted it to the wall and now that we are running this system on 24 volts it is currently set to 115 candela instead of 15 candela as you can see there the candela setting is set to 115 okay and another thing is this alarm originally I had it set 
to high volume, but now that the system is running at 24 volts, high volume is extremely loud. In fact, it's too loud for my setup. So now I bumped it down all the way to low volume, and that's still plenty loud on 24 volts. So this alarm is set to 115 candela low volume. All right, guys, we have moved upstairs. And outside my room here, we still have my Gentex Commander 3. And now that all the alarms are working as intended, including the Wheelock AS, I have it set back to the tone that I'm probably going to keep it at for a while, which is continuous chime. And also, now that we are running this system on 24 volts, I was able to increase the candela to the maximum, which is 110 candela. So that's that one. Okay, and the first alarm in my room that you will see is my Wheelock MT. Uh, this one is currently set to bell for this test. And the strobe is set to 1575 candela. So the bell, it's, uh, excuse me, the bell tone is not going to be the main tone for this system test, or system, I just wanted to play around with it. So that's the current tone that you'll hear for this test. To show you guys this is at 1575 Candela, according to the sticker. And the last alarm we have here in my room is my Wheelock AS24. This one is set to 110 Candela. And also because we upped the voltage, this alarm got extremely loud. So I put it down to low volume instead of medium volume, which was where it was when I first got it. And I'm going to make this extremely clear. This alarm has given me so much trouble, I was on the verge of replacing it. And if it continues to give me trouble, I will not hesitate on replacing it. I will make a separate video on what was going on with this alarm, but I can summarize what happened. Basically, I have this set to code 3. For some stupid reason, whenever it would go off, it would either do continuous or some other code. I don't even know the name for it, but it would not do code three. It would do code three for like a couple blasts, but that was about it. So I think I got it fixed, but for the most part, or excuse me, I got it fixed for the most part, but if it continues to give me trouble, then I will probably be replacing this alarm. But right now it is working correctly, thankfully, because I really do like this alarm, so hopefully it continues to work as intended. All right, guys, now let's talk about the pool stations in my room. Nothing has changed. I still have my Simplex 4099 Dual Action T-Bar. Still working good and uh, glad to have it with my system. Okay guys, and also in my room we have my Firelight BG12L, uh, still working correctly and is also a great pole station. All the pole stations I have right now I would highly recommend if you are wanting to get any pole stations for your system, these are great pole stations. I will say that the 4099 dual action heat bar is an addressable pole station. I didn't know that at the time, but now I do. This one of course is not, this is just a two wire uh, uh, pull station, so it is just a conventional pull station. But still works great. Okay guys, and now it's finally time to reveal to you my biggest upgrade to my fire alarm system. And I can't believe I've done this, but I found a way to be able to do this. My newest alarm is a Simplex True Alert. The model number is 4903-9418. Now right now I bet you you all are thinking how in the world did you get a Simplex True Alert to work with your system? And you know that's a good question. I uh, as you know do not have a panel so I had no way of making this alarm work because it is smart sync. And that was a bummer to me, because I originally did get this alarm back when I first started my fire alarm collection. And when I saw that it didn't work, I was very sad. But then I stumbled onto a video on YouTube that showed you how to make any smart sync device work correctly without a panel. But you will need this piece in order to make it work correctly. 
And this is the device. This is a Simplex 4905-9938 Smart Sync module. Now, this alarm is hooked up to it, and uh, you can obviously see a bunch of wires on how it works. And so, this is the only device you'll need to make any smart sync system work without a fire alarm control panel. I know there's a lot of you on YouTube who do not have a panel, just like me. And I've also seen videos on YouTube where people are saying, don't buy True Alerts. And I would completely agree with that statement. Do not buy anything with Smart Sync unless you either have A, a control panel, and or B, a Smart Sync module. It will not work. Obviously, you could see videos on YouTube that will show you don't buy True Alerts or any Smart Sync device if you don't have that. Luckily, I was lucky enough to find a Smart Sync module on eBay for a decent price. I will warn you, though, that these Smart Sync cubes are not cheap if you get a brand new. They're expensive, so if you want to have that part of your system, be prepared to spend a lot of money unless you get a good deal like I did. So. Uh, I will explain how this works at the end of the video. Alright guys, so these are all the alarms that I have in my system and these are all the pulse stations I have in my system. So we're going to go ahead and do system test 8. Now for system test 8, obviously you're going to see me running around a lot and everything. It's not going to be tripoded like the explanation was. Now I will say this. I did System Test 8's video last night, so you'll notice a difference in the lighting, so I apologize for that. But everything will still be working correctly, and yeah, so here we go with System Test 8. 3, 2, 1. Alright, let's go ahead and silence. Okay, and that's the thing. Whenever you power it down, that doesn't shut off immediately. It kind of winds down a little bit. And also in this video, if I can find the keyhole, let me set this up, you know. Three, two, one. I'm not going to run downstairs for that one because it's kind of unnecessary. Reset it, so here we go. Three, two, one. So as you heard there, that's what it sounds like when it powers down, so to speak. So, okay. So you can see it's still activated. Obviously, there's no power, so you don't have to worry about it. So, open it and close it. 
There you go. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed System Test 8. And I'm going to make a quick video on this, on how I made my Simplex True Alert work correctly. And, of course, as I said in the video earlier, it's because of this. And I'm going to give 100% credit to username MSJ191961. He did a video on YouTube on how to wire up a Simplex 4906-9134 chime strobe. So, if you want to see more on that, you can check out his video. I would highly recommend it. Give him some support. He is a, he did a great job with the video. But I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation of how I got this to work. Okay, so this is what the sync module looks like. The outside of it, anyways. So this is how you get this to work. The devices are going into NAC out. So what I mean by that is the alarm, the true alert, is hooked up to NAC out, as you can see there, which is numbers 1 and 2. Now the power supply for this are going into NAC in. The wires are kind of covering it up, but it's on the rightmost side on the lower part of the letterings. Right there. So those are numbers 5 and 6. And then you have jumpers from NAC in to horn control in, which is right there which are screws number one and two. If you get this device, you can obviously see the screws. And that is all you need to make this work correctly without a panel. Now I know the camera's not completely focused right now and I apologize for that. I can't figure out what is wrong with this thing, but right there you can kind of see four dip switches. They're on the left side of the module, those little grayish colored things. Those control which tone you have your alarm set to. Now dip switches 1 and 2 are the only ones that can control the tones that you can do for the uh, device you have plugged into it. So currently all the switches are down. I know they look up to you but they're down. <laughs> and that's for code 3. The only options you have are code 3 continuous and slow march time. For continuous you would flip dip switch 1 back down and dip switch 2 up. I wish I could get a better picture of that for you guys. And then for, for uh, slow march time uh, both dip switch 1 and 2 would be up. And I do have a separate video of that so I can show that to you later of the true alert making different tones. So that's basically how this works. Alright guys, well that's going to wrap it up for System Test 8. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, there will be more fire alarm videos coming. I do have more projects in mind. Uh, I'm just going to wait for the right time to do them. And many of you are, might be wondering, why do I still have the uh, on-off switch if I'm running it on AC power, which by the way it plugs into that strip right there. But anyways, you're probably wondering why do I have the on-off switch. It makes it very easy to turn the system off when I need to, so it's probably going to still be there. I might put something over it just so it's harder to get to it in case, you know, someone just wanted to tamper with it or whatnot, which has happened to me before. But anyways, alright guys, thank you so much for watching System Test 8 and more fire alarm videos to come and of course more storm and train videos to come. Thanks for watching.